Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. So every presentation should have some objective. So uh, the pr core objective of my presentation is was uh, I can should tell that uh, sensitization of broad, broader biofuel fraternity about a potential opportunity which needs some development work. So now just in a little, uh, lighter vein, you know the market theory tells that whenever uh, there is an exciting technology where revenue model is not yet finalized that attracts more customers than a technology which is more mature but uh, revenue model fixed. That is what is happening with between two sessions. Hydrogen is an exciting future model, so there are more participants over there than the biofuel, which has more mature model. Uh, next. So the first, the why steel industry is in search of an alternate raw material. Next. So the first, that uh, there is a law of unintended consequences. Whatever we are discussing today, we may be aware or may not be aware, so I wanted to include this. This all started with defeat of Al Gore in 1990 election to George Bush. Without that, that it is unsustainable earth, this, all this, these discussions would not have been there. So the dimension is that the, we have climate change and biodiversity loss because pollution is not an issue over here because carbon dioxide has not in yet been declared as a pollutant. And how do you know that the, how climate change is happening? I personally explored this and found that this is the biodiversity lost at the upper eclairs of Himalayans and other regions, then only, that is the only proof till date that the climate change is definitely affecting. Others are all theories. So now the do we need nature, it's a wrong question now because whether the, the question is does nature need humans? We have seen only trailer in COVID. So we have to have some action. Next. So the, if you can see the global steel production, the maximum is from China and India is already the second highest steel producer. producer. And out of total industrial emissions, 23% comes from steel. And, I, and out of that, around nine, there are different calculations, but 7 to a 9, 11% it varies, come from steel sector only. And by 2050, almost one-fifth of steel produced global, globally is expected to come from India. So India's role and contribution is only going to increase. Next. So as I told that iron and steel sector, IEA tells that it is around 7% of all CO2 emissions is, com is coming from steel, iron and steel sector among all industries. Next. So the, what are the approach to steel industry? There are two approaches. One is smart carbon usage, that is called a CU route. Another is carbon direct avoidance. Now carbon direct avoidance route is actually hydrogen route, which will take, as my previous speaker described, that which, will, which may take around next two decades to materialize because the blast furnace, which is the core of steel making, iron and steel making process, or rather at the heart of steel making processes, that life of that is around 30 to 40 years. So no industrial man, you know, industry is going to throw away the current method of blast furnace and go for hydrogen blast furnace, so hydrogen uh, based technology. So that may take a longer time. So as of now, the steel industry approach is smart carbon usage so that the carbon intensity reduces, emission intensity. Next. So the projection of steel demand and increase in GHG emission is that the carbon emission as on that is current basis, carbon emission will be huge by 2050 on India that is and that should need to be reduced. Next. So biofuel biochar is a promising raw material for steel industry. Next. But the challenge is, is that, I'll, I'll sum up later, but the, that there are large variety of feedstocks. So out of that, which should be the best suited for steel industry, it is not yet clear. Next. So now there are a large number of production techniques also. So which technique is, will be suitable for us? That is also needed to be explored. Next. Uh, now there are two types, uh, primarily two types, uh, to, because biofuel fraternity is there. Uh, so non-torrified and torrified biomass pellets. More or less it is certain that uh, non torrified biomass are not exactly suitable for us because there will be a lot of uh, moisture, etc. So uh, techno-economically may be unviable. 
So what, uh, whatever will be suitable for us, us will be torrified biomass only. So what type of technology that is yet to be finalized? Next. So what are the rationale for us for biochar biofuel integration are that it will be a carbon source, resource replacement even if partially carbon dioxide reduction will be definitely there and it is a renewable material reduction of environmental uses it is waste utilization and most important it is it is compatible with hydrogen economy too next so here the what we have found that because we are also new to this field that what we have find found that the lignin content of biochar is most important for us or for rather for any application next so we have around three areas in a steel in a steel plant where there will be po possibility of biochar application one is coke oven where the part of coke can be replaced by biofuel or biomass integration next ha, this is the best possible application route which appears to be it appears currently that this is the best possible application route, route now where part of coke bridge can be replaced by biochar next and another application where some research is going on but uh, it is difficult to uh, go into this right now for even indian for indian steel industry brazil has attempted to some extent that a part of coke in blast furnace itself uh, is being replaced by biomass based bullets but there are lot of consideration because strength etc is very uh, crucial for blast furnace uh, and uh, nobody is going to uh, willing to disturb that uh, dynamics so but this is a these are the three potential areas next so products from biomass which uh, as per literature, uh, some lab-based studies have been carried out, we have found that uh, these are the areas primarily that sintering, coke making, again biomass, not only raw biomass uh, or uh, not only char, raw biomass, oil, uh, seen gas produced of, uh, out of biomass, all these things has been explored in laboratory scale or pilot scale for steel, iron and steel making and outside, not in India. In India, small scale efforts are going on. And uh, there are comparative properties uh, also different biomass compared to our raw, raw material that is coal and coke and some properties are beneficial and some properties are not. I am not going into that detail. These presentations will be available. And uh, a number of work are currently being carried out globally that for this integration. But uh, again, I, I, as I told that except uh, probably bio-PCI uh, integration in Brazil because of their local required local requirements not much commercial effort is there next so what are the but conventional discussion is that uh, it is the utilization of in these three domains but this bioproducts or biofuel biofuel say, from biochar produced from biofuel may have other application in steel plants we starting from waste uh, remediation slag valorization, soil improvement because steel plant has lot of area inside. I will just give an example within our one steel plant around 300 kilometer rail line is there. So you can understand the area occupied by a steel plant so that soil improvement, soil amendment can also be a possibility, carbon sequestration as well as economic benefits. Next. So, what we found that uh, initially we thought that this biomass has application as CDA route only, uh, sorry, uh, SCA route only, but CDA has also will have a role to play because the hydrogen produced from biomass, if it is successful, then uh, it will have uh, role in future also. Next. So this is the methodology that hydrogen electrolysis and through initially through biomass gas, syn gas, then hydrogen electrolysis, then it can help in decarbonization in future. Next. So in our laboratory, uh, my co-participant Mr. Uh, <coughs> Monlik is there and uh, in his lab it has been done that uh, replacement study has been carried out. So it has been found that up to 10 percent replacement of uh, that is coke bridge using biomass pellets uh, is generally positive for sintering. So if uh, some studies can, can prove that it can even go up then it will be beneficial from all most sites for most parameters from productivity yield uh, 
uh, and the uh, lower fraction synthesized production also reduces. Next. So the, what is the road ahead? So first is that, that there is a need to study as my previous speaker told that nobody can do it alone. Some collaborative studies are required that uh, what are the effect of various parameters on biochar production and optimization is required. That what is the exact biomass which is suitable for steel industry and uh, what are the optimal parameters that research is required. Next. So what are the specific studies are required are these, the testing from strength and reducibility, assessment of material chemistry, simulation of actual process conditions, assessment of process chemistry and, and the last one is not discussed generally that comparative assessment of emissions is also required because without that the local authorities may not allow. Next. So and, uh, now this is, although it is voluntary, but India it is uh, currently being lot of stress that whatever we do, we go through the process of standardization. Standardization will require that not only one, uh, one organization works on it, but multiple organization works on it, come at a common platform, and then that is published that utilization standard is fixed. Uh, so that has, that is also a work area. Next. So issues to, what are the issues to address or challenge whatever you tell that first cost, then collection, uh, aggregation or transportation mechanism for, for raw handling of biomass, then how do we store it, low bulk density and energy density is a challenge which we can, how can we overcome that, then sustainable, ensuring sustainable availability and finally when all, all these are accepted the change adoption is very crucial. Because our plants obviously they are working for long in a particular mode, suddenly changing or accepting of that is difficult, that is we have to work on. So the issues to address before wide scale in implementation, standardization we already told, that process compatibility, energy efficiency, carbon content and especially consistency, supply and scale, cost considerations and environmental impact. Next. So the multidimensional actions are, actions are required. That first the addressing issues related to sourcing of biomass, then collaborative studies are required, then tailored biochar design for steel industry, optimization of biochar utilization, development of technical understanding which is currently lacking and exploration of other applications in the context of steel industry beyond the core areas. So but the opportunity is around uh, 50,000 tons per year. Next. So the accelerators, these will be the database development um, and various organizations, monitoring, stakeholder integration, testing labs and certification bodies and financing and clearances. Next. Thank you.